Thank you so much, Angela. What's in a name? It was Easter Sunday about two weeks ago and I was wearing my pretty dress. Brian and I went out for brunch at the Burger Lounge in Del Mar. We were traveling that day. I was sitting at a table under the shade and my husband was inside at the restroom and a group of bikers took the table next to us. They were motorcycle bikers. I think they were from all over the state and they were coming together for a motorcycle run and then they were stopping to have lunch, same as Brian and I. I was over listening to their conversation and one of them said to the group, hey, I hear there's more Karens here than any place else in the state. Hi. I'm a Karen. I took offense to that because they did not mean it in a nice way. However, if I were to stand up and say something, I would just prove their point. So for those of you that don't know, Karen has a new meaning than it used to have. It's come across in the last few years. According to dictionary.com, and this is the slang version, what does Karen mean? Karen is a pejorative slang term for an obnoxious, angry, entitled, and often racist, middle-aged white woman who uses her privilege to get her way or police other people's behavior. As featured in memes, Karen is generally stereotyped as being a blonde, asking to speak to retail and restaurant managers to voice complaints or make demands, or also to be anti-vax or a Generation X soccer mom. In 2020, Karen spread as a label used to call out white women who were captured in viral videos engaging in what are widely seen as racist acts. Is that me? Am I a Karen? Well, I know I should not take it personally, but I do. That is my name. That's what I grew up with. And at work, yeah, I do police other people's behavior. That's my job. I work in a healthcare kitchen and I gotta make sure we follow the rules. But am I entitled? Am I a racist? And why does it hurt so? Why does it hurt when I hear Stephen Colbert make fun of my name on late night TV? Well, if I think back, I think I came by this naturally. I should have seen it coming. My father, his name is Richard. He goes by Dick. When my father was a little boy, he was not born with the name that he later had. His last name was Go to Bed go to bed, G-O-T-O-B-E-D, go to bed, go to bed. So he was known in the neighborhood as Little Dicky Go to Bed. When my mother and father dated in the 40s, people would have said Mary Ellen Shadle and Dick Go to Bed. You didn't do that in the 40s. So I should have seen it coming. I had it coming. Uh, well, my when I was born, my parents changed their last name. My dad didn't want his children to grow up being teased, so they changed it to Emerson. What a nice, ordinary name. It's, a, it's another English name. Go to bed is English in origin, so is Emerson. I used to tell people I was related to Ralph Waldo. I'm not, but it made a good story. So I moved to San Diego. About a month after I moved here, I'm signing a, the receipt at a store, my credit card purchase, and one sales clerk turns to the other sales clerk and looks at me and says, oh, hi, Miss Emerson. And for those of you that don't know, Miss Emerson is the winner of a uh, bikini contest. Who's known for looking good in a uh, bikini? So again, I should have seen it coming. But did the pejorative terms fit me? Well, first of all, am I entitled? I think I'm the nicest person you'll ever meet. I, I hear that from my friends. I hear that from my coworkers. I hear that from my staff that work for me. I'm so nice. So why do people call me a Karen? <sighs> Am I entitled? I, you know, Brian and I have made choices in our life and we've tried to make our decisions based on what we think is lifestyle based and good for the environment and not to try to get what's best for us. And that hasn't always worked out right. Am I a racist? Well, let's just say I try to do better. I know when my children were little, we looked extensively for a elementary school that would be diverse, that would be racially diverse, socioeconomically diverse, and we found it. And we raised our children to see us all as equal. So does the name Karen fit? I like to say it doesn't. So what have I learned? Well, when I look back, I think, first of all, 
it's just a name. It is, it's my name and therefore it does kind of hurt me, but it's, they're not talking about me. I don't need to take it personally. Um, I also learned maybe I should not take things, I should have a little sense of humor. So I'm trying, so I looked up jokes about Karen. How many Karens does it take to change a light bulb? One. But she'll call, probably call tech support and demand they send her a brand new light bulb and come over and change it right away. Um, so two Karens are at a restaurant having dinner and the waiter comes over and says, is anything okay? <laughs> so I've learned to kind of laugh at myself. Another thing I've learned is that we have to be careful with what we say and what we say about other people and how we use words and how they can hurt. So it helps me to internalize more and think about, well, what hurts me and what have I said and how can I improve my language and how can I be better? So looking back at that day at the Burger Lounge on Easter Sunday in my pretty dress, how could I have handled that differently? Well, so let's go back there. So I'm sitting at the table in my pretty dress and my bathroom, my, my husband is out at the bathroom. Mr. Wissenberg, you thought I was gonna say John, right? So as I'm waiting for my husband to come back and I hear someone say, hey, I hear there's more Karens around here than any place else. I could turn very nicely to him and say, wait, you're in luck. There's one right here. You're sitting right next to a Karen. And I gotta tell you that I think I'm one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And I know you're a nice person too, so I hope that next time maybe you'll think about me and you'll not use that word in a pejorative manner. Thank you. Hi, I'm a Karen. Back to you, Angela.